Okay, yep. That works good. Okay, I think probably do we want to go ahead and get started? Yeah, I think so. Sure thing. All right. Well, hi, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well uh, this last Thursday of May um, going into the holiday weekend. Um, thank you all for gathering with us today for our monthly meeting. Uh, again, my name is Charles Lively, um, myself and Lippy, we're the science engagement engineers and happy to be working with all of you um, to help further engagement and community amongst our users. And so we'll get started with our plan for today. Um, again, of course, we want everyone to uh, interact as much as possible. Uh, give us your th thoughts or any questions throughout the meeting today, as well as make sure you participate on the Slack with any questions, tips, or even just look what I learned for as you continue throughout the, the research journey. Um, Charles, for some reason, we can't see the sl any slides. It says loading. Do, are you seeing the slides? Oh, like we just see yeah. a kind of a black screen that says loading. Yeah, I don't know why that is. That can happen if you just shared the single screen, and then you sh and then you put in presenter mode. Oh, so I need to share like your whole screen for that. The whole screen. Okay. All right. Thank you for pointing that out because I was just going away. <laughs> so let me. My share, I would need to do. Oh no, did something just close out for me? Okay, one second. I'm sorry. I exited out of too many things. So, what I would want to do is share my desktop, right? And then Let's see, and now can go to Perfect. what about now? Perfect. Okay. All right. All right, so as I was saying, um, yeah, please speak up, like if I'm not showing slides when I should be. Um, again, today we'll go ahead and go through with our usual um, win of the month, uh, any win of the month that you may have, what you might have learned. Uh, updates on quarry retirement, it is happening. Um, announcements and call for participation. And then just a little um, discussion on using Slurm and sharing tips and tricks and any, um, any tips that you might have as well. Okay. Okay, so for today's sort of win of the month, um, we were thinking we'd like to actually have everybody share in chat um, first. Um, sometimes it's a little scary to like unmute. So if you have a recent win, which just means, I mean, it just is a win for you. So it doesn't have to be like, you know, it, you know, maybe it's a paper accepted or maybe you just figured something out that you hadn't figured out yet. We'd love to hear about it. Um, and so if people have anything to share, please feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, give people a couple minutes. Um, just for some context, we like to share this win of the month because it helps us know like, kind of what are people doing on the system? What are people accomplishing? Um, and then we also like to highlight things. Um, we have a couple different ways that 
that we highlight science, um, that people are doing at NERSS, but also we'd like to move into highlighting technical accomplishments that are being done. Um, so I have my chat open. If anyone has had a chance to think of anything, um, you're also welcome to unmute and say something, um, but please feel free to share in the chat um, if you have anything um, that you've recently done that was a win. I love the meme, so I feel like that's a win. It's a great Thank meme. Thank you. That was my that was In my that, win of the month was yeah. making that meme and adding it to this. <laughs> oh, Koichi. Koichi says sorry, but I just lost games this month. Oh, no. <laughs> There's a win hidden in there, Koichi. There's something in there. You every everything is a learning experience. Um, okay, well, if anyone thinks of any wins, um, feel free to share. Um, we do have um, <clears throat> um, a couple of different ways that you can share information with us in terms of if you'd like us to maybe highlight um, an achievement, um, and then. You know, if it, there's also these awards that are given, I think every year, um, and so you can find out some more information about those as well. If you decided that you've done something really outstanding and you'd like us to know about it, um, cool. Okay, well, let's move on. Then maybe, then maybe there will be more for the, the next topic. Um, by the way, I wanted to share this. I think this is something everybody should know about, especially I think relevant to scientific computing, because most of us, some of us are not from computing backgrounds. So this is uh, XKCD, a fantastic um, uh, cartoon, um, if you don't know about it. Um, and basically, I'm not going to read all of this, but the, the, the sense here is that, you know, people sometimes make fun of people or judge people for not knowing something. Um, it's, we definitely get this a lot, I think, for scientific computing. I remember when I was a grad student just starting off at NERSC, I was really worried and scared to ask questions because I was like, someone's going to judge me for, for the fact that I don't know this already. Um, but I, I kind of like this reframing of like, you know, on any given day, there's probably about 10,000 people who don't know something that are going to learn it that day. That's kind of the, the thesis of this cartoon. And instead of judging them or, you know, making fun of them, you could actually be the person to tell them about it and, you know, enjoy their reaction to learning that, especially if it's something really fun and interesting. So um, that's sort of the reframing, I think, for the today I learned, you know, it's it's not about, you know, it doesn't have to be something super high level. It could be something that you know, maybe you're worried is really basic um, or that someone might judge you for, but, you know, that's not the case. We'd really like to see our users realize that scientific computing is really hard and you come from a different background. You're not necessarily a computer scientist. So there might be something that you learned about using terminal, about um, Python, about C++, whatever it is that you're doing that you didn't know before that someone else probably doesn't know either. Um, for example, yesterday, um, uh, Rebecca was telling me a bit about, so I've never compiled any code before. I've been a completely like Python, sort of like more data um, person. Um, I've run some some simulations that were written in like Fortran and C++, but I've never had to actually compile them or do anything. Um, and so she was telling me about the correct uh, words to use to describe, like you don't execute a make file, you run make, and then the make file like, does whatever it needs to do. Um, and so this is just like some kind of vernacular understanding of the fact that, you know, what is a make file? Like, what is make? What are these, you know, kind of terminology? Um, so that's something that I literally learned yesterday. <laughs> um, so this is another chance if anyone has anything they've learned recently, please feel free to share it in the chat or um, just unmute and, and share it. Thank you, Koichi.
Well, I'll tell you one that uh, I learned. So Charles and I, we were working on the main topic of today's uh, presentation, so I won't give away all of that, but we just learned so much from just talking to a system administrator and just kind of watching him do his thing for an hour. Like my mind was blown within the first 10 minutes. There were commands I didn't know existed in Linux, but that exist and that they use to really uh, to really maximize what they get out of these um, Slurm commands that we're going to show you later on. That and also even like uh, when we met with Chris and he was showing us the NVIDIA wrapper libraries for the power, power aware metrics that are included in the library, that was something that um, I learned that was kind of, I guess, uh, new for Perlmutter on, you know, going forward where we could use the counters to get the expected power consumption at a per node level and then for CPUs as well. Um, well, I knew we could do it, but the way he showed us was a new way for me, so. Um, this is Koichi. This is not me learning anything, but you know, I subscribe this uh, Fortran user group at NASC. Mm -hmm. And then in the Slack channel, I think about a week ago, uh, I don't know him, but Robert shared his interesting experience using Fortran. Mm -hmm. He was, I think, running Fortran code with the double precision and looking at some you know, six or seven specimen place, you know, value as testing. He did very, very minor edit, like remove print command for debugging, for example, or remove one if condition to print something for debugging. He said those edits actually changed <laughs> the result at those very round off level. So if we are simulating very nonlinear chaotic dynamics, those very subtle difference might, I wonder, can change something in the very end of the simulation statistics because uh, in our field, atmospheric science or climate science, sometimes we produce ensemble uh, by uh, explore the sensitivity of the atmosphere of climate to the initial condition. So we add machine precision level perturbation in the initial condition of atmospheric temperature distribution. After running simulation for six months and 10 years or 100 years, they just produce very different climate if you just look at five years statistics somewhere. So, um, I do learn a little bit last year when I'm writing a paper about the uh, climate model and then go through some high performance computing textbook first time to understand the paper written by NASA stuff. <laughs> but, uh, and then those through all those operations and just a little subtle change, how it can change was sort of very intriguing for me. And um, anyway, I, I, this whole time user group also is really nice. Just joining them, I can learn a bunch of stuff I never be able to learn myself. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And a good plug for the Fortran users group, the fun group. If you're interested, uh, please feel free to join. Um, great. Thanks, Koichi. Um, Okay, Any to anyone else, last call. Um, feel free, again, if you think of something, please feel free to share it in the chat. Um, it could really help somebody else too. Um, you, Whatever you learned could be something that somebody else learned, learned today. Um, okay, let's go ahead. Okay, so um, yeah, this is uh, important. We are going to be turning Corey off and retiring Corey on May 31st at noon. Um, so you'll still have access to login uh, on the login nodes and access to Corey Scratch until Wednesday, June 7th. But at noon on Wednesday, all the queues will be turned off. Any jobs that are left will be deleted and um, there, no jobs will be running on Corey anymore. 
Um, and so if you have any um, data files, anything that you need to move, um, you really need to do it. Uh, I would say do it sooner rather than later. So try to get everything off of there, especially in case you have any issues. If something doesn't transfer correctly, you, then you'll have some time to submit a ticket or get help if you need any help. Um, so there's a lot of resources on how to move things off of uh, Query and to Perlmutter. Um, there's, uh, you can use Globus, um, you can use the community file system as a sort of uh, in between uh, Query Scratch and Perlmutter Scratch. And if you have um, data that you want to use the HPSS tape archive for, that's also um, a possibility for, for data that's not used maybe as often. Um, and there's information in the documentation about all of that. Um, please make sure you put any irreplaceable data in CFS or on HPSS because scratch storage is not permanent. Okay, next. Um, so again, if you need more information, you can always submit a ticket, um, but you can also come to the Corey to Perlmutter office hours. There's gonna be two coming up, one on Friday and one on Tuesday. Uh, that's 10 a.m. to noon, um, both on Friday and Tuesday uh, Pacific. Um, and so I think the documentation is being kind of changed so that there's a lot more information about either getting like everything onto Perlmutter or running on Perlmutter because Corey is being retired absolutely on May 31st. Um, okay, any questions so far, please feel free to unmute and ask questions or raise your hand if you have any questions or put them in chat. All of those are valid options. Um, great, okay, next. Okay, um, so I just want to, we just want to share a couple um, imminently approaching um, seminars, events, and trainings. Um, coming up on May 30th is a advanced SQL training. Um, and so this is there, if you, if you're not familiar with SQL, uh, there's, I believe some uh, resources on maybe how to prepare. I think it's maybe a, four hours of content that you can look at beforehand in case you want to catch up and, and participate in that um, training. Uh, so that's going to be on May 30th. There is an introduction to nurse resources training on June 8th. Um, again, the information for that will be on the nurse uh, website in the training category. Um, there's a crash course in supercomputing. Um, is is this, um, this is the one that Re you and Rebecca and Charles, you guys are, are giving, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, great. Okay, awesome. So this might be good for students. If you have students that are joining um, for the summer, um, please ask them to register for this because it's meant to be for like summer interns. I think that's sort of the target audience. Is that correct? It's for any kind of novice parallel programmers. So if you've never okay. done any parallel programming and you're interested, then you can check it out. Okay, great. Okay, fantastic. Um, good. And so that also you can find information in the weekly emails. All of this information is always in the weekly emails, but it's also on the nurse website. Okay, next. Um, okay, so there is a call for submissions for the US RSC, um, so US Research Software Engineer Association Conference. This conference will be in October, I believe, in Chicago. Um, and so the, the poster abstracts are due June 19th. And it's a very good reminder for me because I also am submitting a couple things for that. So I need to uh, get get those in as well. Um, so don't forget June 19th. Um, there's also an RSE eScience uh, workshop. I think that must be part of this, uh, the US RSC conference itself within that. So there's uh, also an abstract submission for that uh, June 30th. And then um, as part of SC, there is a workshop on, uh, let's see, what is it? Sixth Annual Parallel Applications Workshop, Alternatives to MPI Plus X, uh, which I guess they're calling PAW ATM. I love that uh, the acronym. And the submissions will close July 24th. So you have a little bit of time, but um, if you are interested in that, um, please take a look at their website. Um, or at the SC website. Great. Okay. 
Any questions or comments so far? I think I clicked something and it, I clicked on the link and it went yep. to. No worries. Okay, that's good. That means that the links work. <laughs> 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 okay, I think that's it for this. Let's see. Ah, okay. Um, okay, so this is a webinar through ECP, the Ideas ECP um, uh, webinar, which is on Open SSF Best Practices Fetch Program. I actually don't know what Open SSF is. If anyone knows what that is, please feel free to unmute and share or put it in the chat. Um, but it looks like the link. It, the link is probably in the in the weekly email. Um, so if you're yeah. if you're interested in finding out more, check out the weekly email, and they probably have a description about what what is open SSF if you don't know already. Um, the again, the fun group, the Fortran users group is still running their uh, LLVM flying survey. Um, so you can get this link. Um, these these two should still probably be in the weekly email or I, I actually can't remember if they're still in there. Um, yeah, they were. They were. Okay, good. Um, so if you want to participate in that survey, um, or if you want to participate in the nurse message of the day survey, um, so the message of the day is kind of like our status page uh, um, at nurse doc, uh, on nurse.gov, and we're thinking about maybe uh, making it, uh, you know, changing it a little bit, maybe um, improving it a little bit. So if you have any thoughts about that, um, please feel free to check out that survey. Okay. Thanks. All right. Did anyone have any um, events that maybe we might have missed that you wanted to bring to our attention and or maybe you could post a message in our chat about that, as well as on the Slack? Um, if you ever have a, a, a event or anything, you can send an email to um, is it weekly email at nurse.gov. Uh, maybe someone can no, nurse, remind you. Nurse quickly email at lbl.gov and I'll put it in the chat. Yes, that would be great. Um, feel free to use that if you have um, an event that you want to um, let the nurse user community know about. Uh, we will add it to the weekly email. Okay, thanks. All right, go for it, Charles. Okay, all right. So we will move on to our um, topic of the day, and basically it's going to be just kind of just a uh, refresher and some pretty cool queries and options that you can do in Slurm. So uh, let this be in engaging and interactive. Feel free to chime in, share your thoughts, share how you might use any of the, the flags or commands as well. Um, and so, you know, the basics, Slurm. Um, by what it stands for is it's a simple Linux utility for resource management. Um, well, that name comes out pretty, pretty good for what it applies for. Um, and we, you know, we use Slurm for managing our resources in, you know, hybrid large scale environments because it helps us to, you know, make sure that we are getting the most out of the functionality of our jobs that we're submitting that we're able to schedule and allocate efficiently and that we have a management software that is reliable and scalable and provides good insight into our jobs and the projects that we're working on. So really it's, it's very important that we are able to utilize the software in an efficient manner and learn different ways to use it um, to fit our needs. And what this uh, topic of the day, it'll evolve and continue on probably every two or three months where we'll have kind of like a Slurm tips or maybe even a Slurm tip of the month that we can include. And hopefully that'll allow for people to learn how to make uh, a lot of the stock Slurm commands their own for using their research and scheduling jobs and getting data appropriately. And so, of course, we have our, you know, our commonly used for um, submitting our batch jobs and running 
those shops. And this is just kind of like a, a refresher overview highlight when we're using uh, SBatch and SRUN. And we have our different ways in which we can allocate and launch tasks uh, using our different end task flags um, or tasks per node, uh, CPUs, of course, per node, as well as different um, flags for using for quality of service or if we need to control whether we're going to kill um, a job appropriately or not. So these are just a couple of the, the high level flags that of course we all use. Um, for anyone in particular, do you, are there are, are any of these command or any of these flags do you feel are most useful for the type of work that you do for allocating and um, assigning task at a, a per node or per CPU level? Um, what are some of the different ways in which you need to use them for allocating your task for uh, getting the optimal performance? Anyone have any thoughts? Like specifically, I have in mind if there's anyone that has to partition their workloads at a at a different level, like a, a per node or per CPU per task level, what are some kind of alternate configurations that you use that you find might get you uh, better performance? I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the difference between minus N and minus minus tasks minus the first, minus the first uh, minus n option and the second minus minus tasks minus minus task yes tasks i keep hearing minus tasks. 10 yes uh, so uh so roman one of those the first one is the total number of tasks Total and number of tasks per what? For the whole job. Uh, so if uh, I need only one node for then my job. Would, okay, then they would essentially be the same for your purposes. But if mm -hmm. you needed a, a thousand nodes, right, then you would you would do minus n or mi minus minus n tasks equals the number of tasks that is in total across all 1000 nodes. Whereas the minus minus tasks or the minus minus n tasks per node is the total number of tasks on one individual node, then times a thousand, if that makes sense. So a uh, number of tasks is always greater than number of nodes I request for my job. It should be greater than or equal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can Not have less. one task and one node if you felt like it. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, the second question. Uh, for example, I uh, need to run some task somewhere on the cluster, and I need number of CPUs for it. Uh, for simplicity, let uh, see that I, I need like twenty CPUs for my task. It's multi-threaded or whatever I do in it's my business. Uh, what parameter for this batch should I provide? to submit this job. Like um, I want to run one particular task. Mm -hmm. From my opinion, it's one task. From Slurm point of view, I have no idea how many tasks should I uh, specify for this batch parameter. But I need uh, to run it in one node and uh, my task should use like 20 CPUs. Okay, so then it's gonna be minus N1 or you know the first one on there. Uh -huh. You're going to set that to be one. Uh, and then if it's going to do, uh, if if it's going to use multiple CPUs in that one task, then this minus lowercase c on the third line, um, that's going to be the, what you're going to use. Yeah, and I can ignore everything else, like uh, tasks, uh, not in exclusive mode or whatever stuff. Right, yeah, you can ignore a lot of the other things. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Yes, no problem. Just for clarification, because you know the documentation on Slurm page is not 
straightforward yeah. let me put it that way so we also have the job script generator and that is something i would recommend using because it'll give you all the right values it, you know you just input what you want and then it'll give you all the right values this minus c one can be especially confusing for people um and so that's why we have that tool available because it always gets it right and your human brain may not always get it right. And Annette just put it into the link to the generator into the chat. Um, do you, is there any, um, do you know if there's any variance in the way that you execute your applications? Where is it, if it's MPI, um, have you done any experiments to see how limiting the number of CPUs per node would affect performance, or is that something you've looked into? Whether you're considering um, the bash in versus uh, number of CPUs per task. Uh, are you asking me? Yes, yes. Ah, sorry. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. What's, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, what I have discovered, uh, I'm not sure that's specific for per motor because on core it was slightly different policy as far as I understand. Uh, I had, if I don't need the whole node for my mm -hmm. task, uh, I need to specify uh, quality of service uh, shared, I believe. Otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, I'll get the whole node and will be mm -hmm. charged for all 128 CPUs, mm -hmm. no matter if I requested only like 20 for my task. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you use the whole node. And, yeah, okay. but uh, uh, my impression was like uh, on Cori, I kind of can just specify that I need specific number of cores uh, for my task and don't care about anything else. I will be charged only for uh cpu hours i actually used on permuter it seems like it's slightly different so i explicitly have to say that there will be one task which will require like whatever 20 cpus and quality of service should be shared because if i ask for normal or regular i don't remember exactly the value uh, the whole node will be allocated for me and i will burn a lot of cpu hours for nothing yeah, that's that's true, Roman. Basically, the reason we, the way that we charge is essentially like, what resources is a user, does a user have access to that other users can't have access to, right? So even if you were just using a fraction of a node, but you had, you had exclusive use of that node, we have to charge for the whole node. But um, uh, yeah, I understand your point yeah. of view. But my point of view, you know, I ask it specifically for number of cores. I didn't ask. For whole node, I didn't provide minus n capital to get node in exclusive mode. I asked for one task and like whatever 20, 10 CPUs. Why you are giving me the whole node in exclusive mode? I didn't ask for it. So this is kind of mm, not obvious. Yep. I yeah, I understand your, your point of view, but um, so anyway. So the tip, my point is, okay, be very precise what you are asking for, because yes. you can get a lot of more and will be charged later and uh, kind of be very sad about it. Right. That's good advice. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you for um, sharing your thoughts. And, and I asked about, you know, how you were splitting it up per or no per task because sometimes depending on I'm not familiar with the communication or your application at the a lot of MPI collectives or point to point or all to all uh, I can cl clarify a little bit uh, our software we are using is actually another kind of work uh, load manager we mm -hmm. just asking for resources and split it uh, to the computational slots by ourselves so we submitted some job, which uh, then will uh, execute our comments independently from, from Slack. So we are uh, asking, for example, give us the whole node for 12 hours, mm -hmm. and then kind of use all 128 cores doing our stuff internally. So we are not 
uh, submitting one, many jobs to Slurm, we are submitting one job and it will handle mm -hmm. our stuff independently after that. Okay, okay, interesting. I, I and we are not the... using MPI or whatever, any okay. kind of engines. So this is just straightforward, plain, sequen sequential job. Ah, okay, okay, gotcha. Uh, someone okay, just raised their hand, a... Koichi. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I, I have a, a separate question. I just, just came to my mind recently. When do we use SRUN and when to not? Um, so when I submit the job, is a running simulations or processing data? Uh, when I run any code I compiled, which is either MPI or OpenMP, I use SRAM command within the patch script because mainly because that's what I get the, the uh, minus job script generator. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. when I'm process data with some other applications, like uh, um, I have some Python, including Python and a couple of other data processing applications. I tend to recently use GNU Parallel and then wrap my command into shell script and run GNU Parallel. And uh, when I went to GNU Parallel documentation page on NARSC, some example, even not those each process doesn't MPI. Some cases use SRAM to launch uh, those wrapped shell script. So, and I, when I come to think of it, even though those tools I use data process, they are written in like C and then compiled by somebody and then sits there. So it's also compiled code, even though I don't think that I use those compiled binary with OpenMP or MPI. So my understanding is that if I don't use an API OpenMP, it's just serial code. I just run the binary executable by typing its file name. But if using OpenMP MPI, I was using SRAM command and then name of the binary is other options. But if, is that the case or is that other occasions? This reading this the parallel documentation in detail kind of make me a little bit uh, wonder about what is really SRAM is, is doing. That's a great question, Koichi. So let me try to answer it. Um, so generally, yes, if you are using MPI or OpenMP, you should definitely use SRAM. If you're not doing that, then um, it becomes a little bit optional. Um, if you're doing something though, where let's say you have multiple nodes and you want to run uh, different job, different jobs of the different nodes, you know, you want to run mm -hmm. executable on, you know, one instance of it on each node, let's say, but maybe with different inputs, um, mm -hmm. you're still you're going to want to use S run uh, okay. in order to do that because otherwise, because what what happens is when you when you get a job uh, and oh. it starts, you're kind of, it's, it, it works the same way with interactive and with um, with a batch job, but it's easier to think interactive, right? So you're dumped onto one of the nodes of your interactive job, okay? And so then okay. whatever commands that you run on that node, they're, they're just gonna run right on that node. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not gonna run on any of the other nodes that you may have access to without using SRAM. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Okay, so SRAM is the only way, so if I interactive node, if I get two nodes or three nodes, mm -hmm. then if I don't use SRAM, I only using the particular node I landed. That's right. That's okay. Right. okay. Ah, thank you. So sometimes I use, multiple nodes for my data process through GNU Parallel. In that case, probably better to use SRAM. I, I tried both using SRAM and not SRAM, just Parallel. Mm -hmm. I didn't see much difference in, in the performance, like the time it takes. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, was not so 
um, yeah, uh, paying attention too much, but uh, okay. Yeah, so with, with GNU Parallel, I'm less certain about how that works. Um, okay. All I know is like, if you were just doing your own script, it would only just run on mm. whatever node that you were on. You could, you know, you could artificially use the other ones. You could kind of SSH to them and then use them. But SRUN mm. effectively does that for you. Okay. That's good to know. Okay. Thank you so much. Good questions. Any other questions or thoughts? Okay. And so we'll continue on with uh, a few more examples of how to make use of a couple of other commands. And so, of course, we have uh, SQ, which we can use for getting appropriate information about jobs that are in our scheduled queue. And then we also have SQS, which is kind of wrapped into SQ on, on Perlmuter to get um, different information. SQ is going to focus more on monitoring for job status, uh, real-time updates, and for filtering and sorting. And we can also use flags and SQS for getting queue status, uh, fair share usage, and other resource utilization um, using Slurm for any of the jobs that we've submitted. So we can use those and also use S account for getting our resources that have been executed, um, running or terminated um, based off of our individual tasks that we have submitted. And so we have uh, a number of different flags that you, of course, are familiar with or might, but might not use as much. Um, of course, we have by filtering by user with the dash U or user job ID, um, filtering by a time range where you can indicate a start and end time using dash S or start time or E and end time. And then you have different formatting and op output options that you can do as well. And so you can make use of these flags and some of the output options to display specific fields that you might need. And so you can, um, you can limit the fields that you want to display um, based off of the job ID, user, start, end time, uh, the state, the exit code, as well as um, any resource usage, usage mes me metrics that you can utilize. So these are a couple of different ways in which we can make use of appropriate um, tools for for getting the, our, the performance of our jobs and understanding how they were allocated. And so let's a few examples in which you can, you know, kind of make use with the, the idea of formatting and limiting uh, start and end points. So if you wanted to specify a time range um, with your, with your uh, command, you can do a start and specify whatever the date is in the format of year, month, day. And then you can do a end date as well with that same format. And that'll get you specify the, the status for jobs within that range. And then you can also, of course, uh, format it like we previously mentioned. And using the formatting flag, we can specify those specific uh, fields that we want to gain access to. So if we just dash dash format, um, we can list whatever uh, fields we want from account, job ID, submit, start, end, elapsed, et cetera. And we can further modify those as well. Um, we could use our dot dash X flag for providing a summary of each job instead of uh, multiple lines that continue on. And other flags that we can use, we can use our state flag, which can be used to filter only on jobs that have successfully completed uh, versus those that um, had other problems or ended. Um, and all of these different flags and options we can use and format um, to customize our output for um, desired results that we could get. 
So some other examples um, using format, um, we can specify specific options for width with the QoS field if we wanted it to start um, with a, a width of 30 or versus an aligned version with a 30. Um, we can use the uh, dash P flag for um, providing output that's delim delim delimited um, using the, what is that line symbol called? <laughs> is it just a bar line? Pipe. Pipe, is that, okay. For the pipe, um, we can specify based off of uh, duplicates and we can also filter based off of different node options that we have available. And so if we, we have a few examples in which uh, example command in which we could do it for S account, if we wanted to, you know, specify the node that we wanted to focus on, if we wanted to specify that the appropriate uh, uh, summary be presented with the start um, time, the start date being uh, April 1, 2022. And then we can specify the state as well as sort it appropriately as well and making sure that that submission was unique as well. So we can use this type of command, for example, if we want to do a count on the number of jobs that have executed since April 1, and we want to see the various states that have ended on that specified node. So we can use different Slurm uh, flag options to get um, more insight and statistics and for identifying the patterns that, um, that might persist in the jobs that we've executed either from our account or even on different nodes. Now, um, one question I do have perhaps maybe if Rebecca do you know how long the history of different jobs would remain on the system? Um, that's an excellent question. I think it remain it, it, on Corey. I think like everything from the beginning is is actually available, but um, we can only query one month of data at a time, just to uh, just to avoid okay. putting too much of a strain on the Slurm database. Okay. Okay, so even all all seven years of job data is, would be available on well, Corey, I guess, and previously. Yeah, it should be. Oh wow. Okay. Cool. I, I I thought it might be like a year or two or something like that, but wow, that's that's pretty cool that it's all seven years. That's a lot of data. Then. Does does anyone have any um tips or questions on how that how they've been able to use some of these flags or if if you have or have not used them before in the past. No, well, we will, we're running on time, so we'll just continue on, but feel free to chime in and give your a thought, your thoughts. Ah, Koichi is trying it now. Good, good. Um, so other useful commands um, that a lot of um, a lot of engineers in our group um, and consultants have used um, also is the S control that um, a lot of admins will use in Slurm, and we can use that to get uh, detail. Um, we can do things like uh, show information related to a specific uh, reservation and how it's been used. Um, we can use it to show information for specific types that have been used, such as uh, whether it's a debug reservation, and then we can also um, include appropriate flags or whatnot to get uh, information pertaining to start and end time, uh, duration, the nodes used, and a lot of other information. And so we can use S control show for showing different aspects about some of the uh, submissions and the jobs that have uh, been executed on the system. Okay, any questions or thoughts on Koichi? Oh yes, very basic question by the way. What 
when we say reservation, uh, yeah, what does it mean in general? Uh, my mind is when we say reservation, somebody use whole system for testing or for special applications. Yeah, that's is that the case. That's right, Koichi. So it, it may or may not be the whole system, but sometimes we reserve some nodes in the system for various reasons. Um, a big reason, like we'll create a reservation before we're going to have a maintenance, for example, um, to assure that there aren't any jobs running when we shut down the machine. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one, as one uh, thing. Another thing is sometimes people want to have a reservation for for various different purposes. Um, you know, they may they may need to run some really big jobs, like for a you know for Gordon Bell Prize sort of things or um, other reasons. And sometimes people need a reservation because they have a job that um, they want to debug and they want to just be able to debug it in real time. During the oh, okay. So and, users can submit the request. Yeah, users can yeah. submit a request for a reservation, and so we give them a reservation. Usually, I, so I'm the decider on reservations, um, uh, so I usually say yes, but it just depends on what somebody's asking for. Okay. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then Micah shared uh, a good tip in using S control for even adjusting um different attributes after the job has already started. Yeah, you so, have to do it before your job starts. Okay. Um, before it starts. Ad, yeah. yeah, an admin can do it after your job starts, but be, but for a user you can only do it before your job starts. Um, and that's really so there are other S control um update commands that that don't work as well but uh, the one that does work is uh is s control update the uh, wall time that works good deal and felix entered some useful useful script that he uses yeah, so I always had the problem later looking up what exactly the job script for a specific job ID looked like. Mm -hmm. So I found that, um, the, so I created the script, which basically submits the ticket and then immediately queries the, um, the job ID because S-Control also allows you to find out what the script for a specific job was. And this is combined to then write it in some directory of your choosing and then you have basically all your scripts saved with the specific ID they were submitted. Good, good. Thank you for sharing. Good deal. Okay, and continuing on, um, other useful commands that we have, of course, um, we have sinfo, which we can use for um, getting a, a better understanding. So our magics are available in Jupyter, awesome. Um, uh, understanding about specific job types and um, within the queue and resource availability. So we can use the S info and the dash O flag for outputting the format specifically for uh, different partitions um, based on the availability, uh, the nodes and node status that are going to be used. And so we can use just the formatting options to help the the information be displayed in a, a logical manner um, where we can break down different aspects about um, the uh, different uh, the availability of the different types of nodes um, that are up there um, and we can this can be used to help identify which nodes are available in use um, idle um, and basically can serve as kind of a tool for helping you to see what resources are available for you to use right now for submitting a job as well. And so other, okay, 
another, and we have, I don't want to hold anyone. Um, I'll quickly go through a few examples on aliases, but these will also be available. Um, and you can use the alias to, um, for shorthand to get specific information and format it in different ways. And so alias, aliases can be, you know, time saving, they can help you customize things and as well as, you know, provide consistency. And so we have a, a couple of different examples in how you can use aliases in Slurm. You'll just use the keyword alias, and then you will name it, and then you will specify uh, the type of command you want that alias to be based off of. So here we have two examples where you can create an alias for, for getting specific information and a, a dedicated format. And so this is going to be a, a sinfo nodes alias that is based off of the sinfo command um, and some of the different options that you can use for formatting. And basically the output for this sinfo nodes alias will show uh, basically the partitions, allocated nodes, node state features, and node names that have been utilized. Um, and other types of aliases, there are, I believe, four or five different examples. I will end with this one, which is just one that uses a, it's a check job alias for using the S account flag. And you can use that for getting information um, on, from the S account command using the dash O flag. And the information that will be gathered here is based off a of job ID, user, job name, QoS, et cetera. And so we can do that um, and we can use the dash J flag to specify the job ID that we want to check as well. Um, and so we have a couple of other examples here of different aliases that can be used. And um, these will be available in the PowerPoint. Okay, and I was just looking at the chat. Koichi and Rebecca, did you were you two talking about something specific? I'm sorry, Andrew asked about the aliases, and those are just things that you would put in your bash RC, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Just useful ones that you can automatically have loaded to execute. Okay, and yeah, so I. Oh uh, yeah, I might chat to us. I try to kind of type as I see the screens, but uh, it would be nice if I like, can uh, have this in some kind of documentation for the later use and copy paste. So I ask in the chat, are you are you going to put these information sometime in the documentation? Yeah, and what we're gonna do, um, well, of course this PowerPoint will be available, but we're working on updating and revamping documentation. And what we'll definitely work on is uh, a, a, a useful section on tips and tricks and helpful slurm commands and uh, tricks that you can use as well. Great, looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, um, I do not, we're a little bit over. Um, so uh, thank you all for attending this month's uh, user meeting upcoming topics that we have in the pipeline, um, Jupiter Hub at Nurse, as well as uh, other tips and tricks, um, as well as security and how it's handled at Nurse and accessing our systems. Um, tips and tricks is something that we're looking to evolve and get feedback from everyone moving forward. So we'll be sending out a few surveys for ideas on possible tips and tricks that you think would be beneficial for all users. So uh, feel free to provide your thoughts on that so that we can use that for future sessions as well. Um, if you have any other topics, you know, please do feel free to put that in and nominate it as well as any um, science highlight submissions as well. And with that, uh, that is the end of our uh, user meeting for this month. 
Uh, did anyone, thank you all for attending. Uh, did anyone have any last minute questions or thoughts or feedback? Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. On Cori for SLARM, for RA job, there was a limit for like 65,000 tasks per RA job. Is it still actual for pedal motor or you lift it with limit? Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, Roman. It's probably something to submit a ticket and find out. Okay. I, I just thought maybe, you know, I, I I think it's still the limit, but okay. It probably you, is still the limit. That's probably yeah. a limitation on um on just the number. I mean that that sounds like a power of two sort of thing. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, if not, um, thank you all for taking time out of your day to attend uh, this month's meeting. I hope that everyone has a good end of the week as well as a good um, holiday weekend um, and uh, be safe. And remember to come to any of the Corey to Perlmuter office hours if you have any other questions um, as we work on um, uh, retiring uh, Corey as well. But other than that, um, hope you guys have a great one and we will see you next month, if not before that. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Have a good Bye. one. Bye, Bye. Yeah. Bye everybody.